Hello, and welcome to another unboxing video. Now today, we're opening a booster box for Tactical Masters, the newest set in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG playing card game. And as usual, I wanna start by listing off some of the cards that we're hoping to pull from this set. Now in this one, it's a lot of collector's rares. And normally, with the Starlight Rares, collector's rares, you know, those types of rarities, I don't even say them. I just focus on the ultra rares and those kinds of things because the chance of pulling these, these types of cards is very low. But in the spirit of optimism, and because there are so many <laughs> and not that many ultra rares, I am gonna say them today. So I just wanna get this out of the way, spit fire them, and we'll move on to the actual unboxing. So for collector's rares, we've got Droll and Lockbird, Lovely Labyrinth of the Silver Castle, Ariana the Labyrinth Servant. All three of those clock in at about $80. Then we've got Anti-Spell Fragrance, Classic Floodgate, and Runic Tip, both of which are about $70. We've got Runic Fountain clocking in at $65. Ariane, the Labyrinth Servant, not to be confused with Ariana, $50. Cosmic Cyclone, $50. Trap Trick, $50. And Labyrinth, Labyrinth, <laughs> the Field Spell for the Labyrinth Archetype, which is $50 as well. Then we've got Scapegoat, a classic, course, one of Joey's old cards that has a collector's rare printing, which I think is awesome that they did that, and that is $40. Astrograph Sorcerer, $40. Sheena Gnome, the Valence Priestess, $30. Yes, this archetype debuts the Valence, Labyrinth, and Runic cards, which is really cool. Uh, Valence Wars, the Place of Beginning, $22. And Mamanaka, the Valence United, at $23. So those are all the collector's rares we're looking at. And then we only have four ultra rares here that we're hoping to pull. And as I've said in previous videos, I only mention cards that are above $10. Um, so there are other ultra rares, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to be talking about four of them, which is Runic Tip at $30, Runic Fountain at $14, Welcome Labyrinth at $19, and a different rarity of Ariana, the Labyrinth Servant, at $14 as well. With all those out of the way, let's jump into the unboxing. All right, so as you can see, we've got the usual setup. Mat, sleeves, booster box. I have to say, I'm pretty excited for this one. I think the Runic and Labyrinth archetypes are both really cool. I don't think they are meta-defining in the way that uh, many of the cards from Power of the Elements the last set were, specifically uh, Sprites and Tear Laments. But actually, Runix might be seeing some play. I might be wrong about that, but either way, I just think the archetypes are really cool. Super excited to see what we pull today. Okay. So I'm gonna leave one pack in the box, unopened. I like to do that with just about every set. And now we've got our booster packs, so let's get cracking. All right, we've got Scion, the Valence Archer. Oh, these are all rares. Okay, interesting. Uh, for those who don't know, rare means that the text, the title of the card is foil, and nothing else on the card is, other than, of course, the little uh, square. Compulsory Evacuation Device, Classic Trap Card, Scapegoat, Classic. I can see a Collector's Rare right now. So Collector's Rare has this weird sort of prismatic feature to it, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I only have Reckless Greed and Labyrinth Archfiend. I only have one collector's rare before this one. Now I have two. And that is a gorgeous card right there. That's Ariana, the Labyrinth Servant. And so if I'm remembering correctly, that card is worth $80. First pack, pulling an $80 card. I can't be mad. Let's put that beauty right there. Nice. And let's move on. Fucking great start. All right, we got Nizuki the Valence Ninja, 
We got Fiend Griefing, that's a great trap card for field, uh, for Fiend decks, especially Burning Abyss. Valence Ward, Shinra Bancho, Farewell Labyrinth. We've got Runic Slumber, Senate Switch, and Runic Allure. Now I'm trying to remember what the one foil card in every pack. So, am I blind or did I get gypped in that? Oh, because the Valence World Shinra Venture was a super rare. Super rare means the artwork and so the icons are foil, but the title is not. I was like, did, did I just get scammed? Quick Booster, it's an interesting card. Target one quick, quick play spell in your graveyard, except Quick Booster. Shuffle that target into the deck. If this card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, you can add one Quick Play spell from your deck to your hand, except Quick Booster. Okay, so you're not gonna play this for the first effect, but that second effect is pretty damn good. Um, so this is something you want your opponent to destroy while you have it face down, uh, similar to Waking the Dragon in that regard. That's a cool card. I mean, there's some really good quick play spells out there. Vigilant Fusion, Labyrinth Setup, all right. More Valent stuff. Imperial Iron Wall, neither player can banish cards. It's an, an okay Floodgate. Trap Trick is a great card. It's one of the best trap cards in the game, actually, because it gives every normal trap card more consistency, which I think is really cool. Forgot to, to uh, sleep that guy. All right, back to number four. So we've got Runic Dispelling. It's pretty cool. We've got Pendulum Switch, Duelist Alliance, Anti-Spell Fragrance, Ariana the Labyrinth Servant, Ultra Rare, okay. Now this one, so we've gotten both printings of Ariana the Labyrinth Servant, both rarities, I mean, which is super cool. This one is worth $14, so not bad. And as I said before, I do think the Labyrinth cards are super cool. It's basically, they're different, like, monsters in a labyrinth, obviously. Um, and so they, they revolve around traps and, you know, sort of surprises, which I think is really fun. Pulsar Evacuation Device, again, same. Valence Buster Baron, okay. It's our ultra rare, or uh, super rare, sorry, from this pack. Scapegoat, Labyrinth, Ku Clock, Invader of Darkness. This is a terrible card, <laughs> but it's a classic. Absolute King Backjack, it's a 5Ds card, of course. And you know what, that card's actually not that bad. I've teched it into some of my casual decks. Going with this stack here. I mean, I pulled the collector's rare, so honestly, whatever happens next, I ain't mad. Uh, more valence. Bear blocker. What's this guy do? During your opponent's turn, set cards in your spell and trap card zones cannot be destroyed by card effects. If a set card in your spell and trap card zone is destroyed by opponent's card effect, this card gains 800 attack until the end of this turn. Okay, that confused me for a second because I was like, wait, they can't be destroyed, but it's only during your opponent's turn. So during your turn, if your opponent played, say, Dust Tornado and destroyed one of your face down cards, he would gain 100 attack and become a 2400 beat stick at level three. Not good card, but cool. It's cute. <laughs> Gary the Runic Fangs. Okay, it's a fusion monster for the Runic archetype. There's an Astrograph Sorcerer. Great card for Pendulum decks. Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon, but for all your opponent's monsters, Superior Iron Raw, Reckless Greed. I'm interested in, I'm not sure why uh, Reckless Greed is seeing, is being reprinted in this. Um, feel free to comment down, in the, down below if you know why that is. All right, Mizuki the Valence Ninja again. Now, I don't know what the gimmick is for the Valence cards. I think they're kind of cool in design, but I'm not gonna lie, I am turned off by Pendulums pretty much immediately. So I might not be giving these cards um, the chance that they're worth, but I'm just not super interested in them. Not nearly as much as I am the Runics and the Labyrinths. Runics, Smithing Storm, it's cool. 
Valence World, Koenig Vissen. So that's our super rare Runic Slumber, Duelist Alliance, Cosmic Cyclone, Classic, Lilith, Lady of Lament. Koenig Vissen. Now, Koenig, if there was an umlaut, two dots over the O, it would be Koenig, which is king in German. So this is, I'm not sure what Vissen means, but it's kingdom, maybe king or kingdom something since it is a field spell. Um, yeah, so I guess there's Germanic. This archetype is Germanic in its theme, which is kind of cool. Compulsory, dispelling, Labyrinth Barrage. I do like the way some of the Labyrinth cards, they're little chibi guys, uh, little adorable little babies. Um, in the artwork, which I just think is really cool. When you activate a set normal trap card, except Labyrinth Barrage, this effect becomes that normal trap's effect when that card is activated. Also until the end of your opponent's next turn, after this card resolves, your opponent makes, takes no effect damage from your card effects. So it's basically if you have this set and you activate another trap, it's two of that trap, essentially. It's, it's a double effect of that trap. Runic Allure. Each time a quick play spell card is activated, Banish the top card of your opponent's deck. You can only control one runic allure. So I see maybe some synergy between that and, um, I'm forgetting the name, but that card I read earlier that lets you search a quick play spell or take one from grave and shuffle it into deck. Quick booster. There it is. That's the exact card I was talking about. All right. Droll and Lockbird. Great card. Has seen a lot of play. Runic Destruction. Okay, this is cool. What's this guy do? Activate one of these effects, but skip your next battle phase after activation. Target one spell, trap your opponent controls, destroy it, then banish the top four cards of your opponent's deck. Special summon one Runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's... So you're cheating out an extra deck monster, which is pretty damn good. Um, or it has utility as essentially an MST. So it does have some, you know, versatility in when you want to play it, either to disrupt your opponent's board, get rid of a floodgate, something like that, you know, or continue your own plays by bringing out an extra deck monster. So that's a pretty good card for the runic archetype. And the banishing cards from your opponent's deck, I think that's the gimmick of that archetype. I think they it, maybe you're supposed to try to make your opponent deck out, but the problem with make your opponent deck out in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is that typically it sends those cards to the graveyard, and in a lot of decks that's just really good. Milling is really good, and having cards go from deck to grave is really good. Thins out your deck, gives you graveyard potential. Um, so these cards banish them, and I think face down maybe? Oh no, this one doesn't doesn't say face down, so maybe, maybe they're not all face down, or maybe all of them are not face down, but... Um, still, banishing is much better than sending to the grave, so they're a better version of that gimmick. Pendulum of Fusion, Feet and Griefing. Runic Freezing Curses, Labyrinth, Stove Torby, yep. Valence Dominator Duke, Invader of Darkness again, Reckless Greed. So let's take a look at this card. Alright, Runic Freezing Curses. Activate one of these effects, but skip your next battle phase after activation. Target one effect monster your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of this turn, then banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck. Special summon one runic monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. Okay, so, seeing a pattern here. <laughs> quick play spell cards, and of course we saw some other cards that had synergy with quick play spells, that either give you one option, which varies based on the card, and the second option it seems like is the same for all of them, which is cheating out an extra deck monster that is has runic in the name. And honestly, that's a really cool mechanic. Um, this one, I would bet, would see a lot of play in runic, card, runic decks because it's negating an effect, monster's effect, which is really good. Um, obviously, modern UVO, that's a very powerful effect with how relevant monster effects are in the current game. All right, Pendulum Switch, Runic Dispelling. Archfiend's Ghastly Glitch. If you control a fiend monster, target one card on the field, destroy it, then you can send one fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard. That's pretty good. That's kind of like fiend griefing, but honestly, maybe a little better. Another lament card, scapegoat, labyrinth, archfiend, okay. 
So this has um, Ariana and Ariane from the Labyrinth archetype in the artwork, but of course it has synergy with virtually any fiend deck that likes to send monsters from deck to grave. So Burning Abyss, that would be a really good addition to, for example. Runic Dispelling, Pendulum Switch, another copy of Gary the Runic Fangs, or Jerry. Or either way you pronounce it, it's kind of a funny name because um, it's a dog or a wolf. And then these cards we've seen before. But um, yeah, I mean, he does have a pretty cool little outfit on. He's dressed to the nines. Let's speed him up. Compulsory, I love that card. Another Archfiend's Ghastly Glitch, all right. And this one, I know I didn't do this with Gary because I didn't want to uh, search through this whole pile, but since I have it right here, I am gonna double sleeve this. Put these in the same sleeve. Not double sleeve, that's if you put two sleeves on a card. This, I don't know what you would call this. But it's sleeve efficiency. Mad Marquess. So it looks like all the Valence cards, um, their field spells are like kingdoms of some kind, and then their names are different titles of nobility. Marquess, you know, Marquis, but female virgin, I believe. Um, Duke, things like that. Runic Freezing Curses again. All right. More Valence cards. I think the reason I'm not a big Pendulum person is because, like, Pendulums happened in the game when I was not playing or paying attention to it um, during my Yu-Gi-Oh! hiatus, shall we say. And I don't understand a lot of them. I'm not familiar with any of the Pendulum archetypes, really. Uh, when I eventually watch 5Ds, or not 5Ds, Arc V with my friends, maybe I will get more into them, but for the time being. Okay, Labyrinth, Labyrinth. And then we got some repeats there. This is the super rare, so it's not the one I mentioned earlier, which is the collector rare worth $50. But um, if I wanted to build a Labyrinth deck, this is obviously a necessity, so I'm happy to pull it. Let's keep going. Got Quick Booster, Pendulum Switch. Valence Genesis Grand Duke. Jesus Christ, the names on some of these. And I feel with pendulums, like, especially, oh, Fair Welcome Labyrinth, cool, another Labyrinth card. With pendulums, especially when they're extra deck monsters, I'm like, oh my god, how does this even work? Like, <laughs> it's just, there's so much text. Look at that, it's, you have to read a novel to understand this card. That's part of why new players often don't stick with Yu-Gi-Oh! compared to games like Magic, where cards have like one sentence of text on them. Pendulum Fusion, Renegade Smithic Storm, another Kernig Vissen. Although it doesn't have the umlaut, I'm still pronouncing it like it does, because why not? Valence. Valance. Runic Golden Droplet. Okay, another little Runic card here. Quick play. Activate one of these effects, but skip your next battle phase after activation. So, you know, the clause that they all have. Your opponent draws one card, then you banish the top four cards of their deck. That's not good. Special summon one Runic Monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. Okay. So, problem with this one is... I don't know if there's Runic cards that like your opponent to draw a card. I, it's unlikely. Um, but that first one we looked at had a positive effect for you, and then it also banished four cards from the top of your deck. This one seems like you have to deal with the draw that your opponent gets off of it, and then it banishes four. So significantly worse, because banishing the top four cards from your opponent's deck is not, like, a great effect, and them drawing a card in order for you to do that is not worth it, in my opinion. Fair blocker. Compulsory, Tractrix, Scapegoat. Runic Fountain Ultra Rare. That's a gorgeous card. Look at that. The 
the artwork of that kind of gives me similar vibes to, um, oh, damn it. My friends are going to roast me for this. It's the card that Kaiba gives Yugi in the anime so he can defeat um, Merrick. It has like a statue on it and it looks similar to this. I, I'm, I'm disgracing myself right now, but that's okay. Renick Fountain. So that card is $14. Not a bad pull at all. And that is the field spell for the Runic Archetype, I should also mention. Okay, we got Scion. Another Labyrinth Barrage. Yeah, that's fair welcome, Labyrinth. Oh, there's a Chandelier Monster. Chandelier. Another Labyrinth Archfiend. We have three packs left in this box. Pendulum Switch, Quick Booster, Hojo the Valence Warrior is our is our foil from this pack. And again, it's just like uh, you got It's a novella. I mean, why? Two packs. Yeah. Runic Destruction? Okay, this is yet another... Oh no, we've already seen this one. Yeah, this is the one that destroys the Spell Artifact. This is the MST-like effect. Or, of course, cheat out a Runic monster from the extra deck. I'll skip your next battle phase. I don't think that archetype cares about battle phases, which is why they do that. It is a, it's a, you know, it's a limitation, but one that I don't think is huge for that archetype if you're running them. Munin, the runic wings. Okay. Cool. Pulled another runic extra deck monster, since those are clearly very important to the archetype. That is awesome. And that's going to do it for our booster box. However, if you're still with me, surprise, surprise, I have another one. <laughs> So the opening resumes. Second Technical Masters. Now this is one that I believe I accidentally bought two of because I normally if I purposely buy two of a box, it's at once, which makes sense. And I did get these in the mail at the same time in the same package. However, I noticed that I ordered them on separate occasions a while back. I pre-ordered these. Um, and I think it's because both times I thought I hadn't ordered it, so I was like, oh, I need to pre-order this so that I get the new set when it comes out. And then I guess the second time I forgot that I had done that, so I ordered them again. And then, of course, those are both pre-orders, so it came out at the same time, and the uh, seller, which is Simply Unlucky, through uh, TCG Player. These guys are great. Highly recommend. Highly recommend TCG Player as well and Simply Unlucky as a seller, uh, they just package them together, which totally makes sense to me. These guys out. I'm also gonna leave one pack unopened in this set, but I might as well consolidate them here. So we got two packs total unopened. And we're hoping for another collector's rare. I mean, just the one is really exciting, but pulled two, that would be incredible, honestly. Make some things to More Valence. Labyrinth. I'm hoping to be able to build a Labyrinth deck after this. That would be really cool. Hi, Jonesy. He's interested in the plastic. Valence, Mad Marquess, Pit Walker, Runic Flashing Fire. Okay, here's a new one. Hello, Jonesy. Oh, no. No. Okay. Let's see if he gives up that easily. All right, well, he's not doing it anymore. Here's another uh, quick play spell from the Riddick Archetype. So, activate one of these effects, but of course, skip your next, best, next battle phase. Target one special summon monster your opponent controls. Destroy it, then banish the top two cards of your opponent's deck, or special summon a rooting monster from your extra deck. And you know what I just noticed with this one? 
the theme between all the quick play spells, which is that they're in first person, the artwork. And that's just a really cool detail. I love when, uh, when there's cool little patterns like that in archetypes that you kind of have to find on your own. Jonesy, Jonesy. All right, well, you can take that. Just don't eat it. <laughs> oh my God, he's being really loud with it. In Griefing, Quick Booster, Runic, Golden Droplet, that one we've seen already. Is this one first person? Yes, you're holding your hand out in this one, I guess. Uno Memento. Okay, I've temporarily satiated Jonesy with some treats and hopefully that keeps him busy for longer than 30 seconds, which it probably won't. But maybe he'll be less rowdy after that, I don't know. Pendulum Fusion, Runic Dispelling, Astrograph Sorcerer, Runic Slumber, ooh, okay. Hugin, the Runic Wings. Now, this one is not worth more than $10. If I recall correctly, it's worth like eight, which is why I didn't mention it, but still a really pretty card. Another Runic Extra Deck Monster, which is cool. Hello, Jonesy. He's drawn to plastic. He likes to chew on plastic a lot. Okay. Excuse me, buddy. Thank you. Okay, that's another cameo from Jonesy. Let's continue the opening. Pendulum switch, quick booster, labyrinth setup, okay. Don't think that's one that we've seen yet. Target two of your labyrinth spell or traps that are banished or in your graveyard, except labyrinth setup, shuffle them into the deck. Then if you control a fiend monster, you can set non-labyrinth normal traps with different names directly from your deck equal to the number of numbers shuffled. You can only activate one Labyrinth setup per turn. That seems like a pretty good card. And let's see what's happening in the artwork here. They are... Not sure. Someone was set up. <laughs> I get that much. Uh, but it's kind of hard to tell. I see the, the chandelier, the two servants, the stove, the clock, and the archfiend. So they're all in here. Yeah, it's a light Jonesy. Compulsory spelling. Another Buster Baron, Trap Trick, Scapegoat, Lilith, Imperial Iron Wall. Whoa. Oh, oh. Jones. Why must you be this way? must go on. Another deer. Nope. Nope. Jesus. All right, I've developed a new system. I have this cardboard box, and as I open packs, I'm going to put the wrappers in this box where he can't access them in the hopes that it leads to less interference from him. Balance World Shinra Bancho. Shinra, I believe, is Japanese, so maybe this is like a. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there are some Japanese style buildings. Um, I'm spacing on the name of them. But uh, it seems like this archetype uses kingdoms from different cultures, because the German one, the Koenig one, did look sort of like a castle, which of course is Germanic. And that's cool, honestly. I dig that. But I don't dig pendulums. <laughs> okay, we got runic spelling, quick booster, runic freezing curses again. This is the one that can negate monster effects. And again, it's first person. It looks like you're drawing a bow in this one, which is really cool. You're wondering why I'm not sleeving these, it's because they're all duplicates, so I'm gonna go back and 
put them in the same sleeve as the original. Which I know I haven't done with some of the cards, but I'm inconsistent. What can I say? Drone Lockbird, Pendulum Fusion, Labyrinth Barrage. All right. Duelist Alliance. That's another Pendulum card. We're going to Slumber. Fairlight Wall. Wait, is this card in first person? It is. Oh, this is another uh, quick play spell. It's just not super rare for some reason like the others. Activate one of these effects, but skip your next battle phase after, after, after activation. Target one face of monster in the field. The next time that monster would be destroyed by battle card effect this turn. It is not destroyed. Also, it cannot attack this turn. Then after applying this effect, banish the top three cards from this deck. Special summon one root monster from your extra to the extra monster zone. Okay. I mean, that's a cool card. I'm wondering how the runic archetype and people might roast me for not knowing the archetype very well, but before doing this video, I'm wondering how they get around the advantage problems that these types of decks typically have, which is like, you're using cards towards a gimmick that takes an extended period of time. Um, so in this deck, it's, I think, meant to mill your opponent out by banishing cards from, their, from the top of their deck while, you know, having some additional effects. Um, but that just means you're using your cards to do that. And what can happen is you can end up with very little card advantage in a short period of time. You can find yourself with two cards in your hand and one card in the field or whatever, you know, because you're burning through these quick play spells that end up in your grave. And it's hard to recycle cards like that. So I'm wondering how this deck exactly gets around that. Another minute golden droplet. But it could be, the answer could be in the extra deck monsters. Because there's also no, as far as I can tell, there's no runic main deck monster. I haven't pulled any, have I? I don't think so. It's all just quick play spells and traps. Okay, here we go. Runic Dispelling. This is another one that I am just now noticing. is also quick play spell in first person. Activate one of these effects. We'll skip to your next battle phase. If your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand, except during the draw phase, discard one random card from their hand, then banish the top two cards of their deck. Okay, that's not too bad. That's basically... Um, Dark Laws effect, when your opponent searches, essentially you can get rid of a random card in their hand, which, you know, knocking stuff out of the hand is always good. Random is not as good, but, like, that card would be better if it was, they had to discard the card they searched, I think. But still, not a bad effect at all. Being griefing. Another Kernig Vissen. Yeah, so if you look at this one. Oh. Okay, I lied. It's not a castle. It's like more of a metropolis, more of like a modern looking city, but still could be Germanic. Science, balance, runic allure. Okay, so this one is a continuous spell and yet again, it's in first person. So I guess they just all are, except for maybe the extra deck monsters. Each time a quick play spell card activates, banish the top card of your opponent's deck. You can only control one runic allure. I'm really into this deck, honestly, this archetype. Um, it's not something I bring to locals, but it's definitely something I play with my friends just to fuck around. Um, one of my friends has an Exodia deck, which of course, again, is not competitive, but it's a fun deck to see if you can win with, and I think these are the the same type. We'll switch. Also, Valence, Buster Baron, again, pulled a lot of that guy. Lady of Lament. Valence, Runic Allure. So if you don't know the Ladies of Lament, the first one was Lilith, I believe, and I think she came out in the Layer of Darkness structure deck uh, a few years ago. But they all have effects that uh, like to work with normal trap cards. So of course, their printing in this set is directly corresponds to the Labyrinth Monsters and Spells and Traps, which also like normal traps. Um, I'll read this one to give an example. Quick effect, you contribute two monsters, then target one of your normal traps that is banished or in your graveyard, set that target, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. Yeah, so that's rough, <laughs> tributing two monsters. But I think like Lilith, this is meant to be used in conjunction with Layer of Darkness, the field spell, which allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters instead of yours. Um, as long as they're dark, which if the field spells on the field, they're all treated as dark. And that's a pretty powerful effect. Um, I'm surprised, actually, they didn't reprint Layer of Darkness in this set. That would have been a, 
a nice thing to do because I think I only have one copy of it. Labyrinth, Labyrinth. Next Slumber. Labyrinth Star. The original Lilith, Lady of Lament. There she is. I know I already pulled one of these, but I'm just going to sleep that one because it's more important to me. A glitch, pulled a bunch of. Still hoping for that collector's rare scapegoat. That would make my existence. Scapegoat's a classic, and I will not tolerate any hate to it. Runic Smithing Storm, compulsory. Spell fragrance. Another Ariana, the Labyrinth Serpent, ultra rare. Sweet. This card again is $14. I've noticed, like, I don't know if all the sets are like this, but it seems like if I if, if the foil card is not, like, the third or fourth card in the pack, then it's an ultra rare instead of a super. Or well, ultra rare or higher instead of a super. See, like, this was the third card, and it's a super rare. But that one was, like, six, like sixth, I think, in the pack out of seven, I believe, each. Yeah, seven. Ah, that new card smell. It's a beautiful thing. Hojo. Definitely pulled every common in the set, I would say. Ah, yes. Okay. So I am hoping to... Um, I am hoping to build a Labyrinth deck just for fun, and I was really hoping I'd pull three of the field spell for the sake of that, which I did, so really happy about that. I haven't, however, pulled Ariane, the Labyrinth Servant, I don't think. I don't know if, it's, if she's only the Ultra Rare. Probably. Oh no, there's... They both have collector's rare printings, actually, so. But that one I haven't been as lucky with. Runic Tip. Interesting. Here's an ultra rare. So this one is $30. Okay, not bad at all. It's another quick play spell for the Runic Archetype. Activate one of these effects, but skip your next battle phase after activation. Add one Runic card from your deck to your hand, except Runic tip, tip, then banish the top card of your opponent's deck. Or, of course, Special Summoner Runic Extra Deck Monster. So obviously that's really good, which is probably why it has a super rare printing, because it searches any runic card. And generic searches like that, you probably know, are extremely good. Another Shinra Bancho. Some more Labyrinth cards. I think a, um, I don't know how much synergy there is, beyond normal trap cards, but like a Labyrinth Trap Tricks deck would be cool. Final pack, don't have any surprise third booster boxes, unfortunately. So this is the last pack I'm opening today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this opening as much as I did. It's a little weird because I pulled the best thing at the very beginning, but um, also pulled some really cool cards after that. And I'm really into these new archetypes. I'd say this is a pretty solid set. You know, got some cool Floodgates like Droll and Lockbird, Anti-Spell Fragrance, some classics like Invader of Darkness, Scapegoat, Compulsory. Um, and yeah, overall I just, I'm really help, happy with this. Labyrinth setup. All right, Scapegoat, Anti-Spell, Invader of Darkness, Absolute King Backjack. So I think I'm in a pretty good place to build a Labyrinth deck. And I might check out the Valence cards because I now, of course, have a bunch of those too, so I'll take a look at it. But again, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your patience with my cat, and have a great rest of your day.